tell you, my friends, this is six story or seven story grandiose shit. It's just thousands of people, and after two pints of uh, beer, I'm so stoned, but so drunk because Glasha didn't get anything. Let's buy souvenirs for Marcos. It's just a very good place. Guinness, 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 Guinness. It's, um, I guess it's a hallmark of uh, Dublin, the Guinness Brewery. Railways used to be cobbled, and one of the lanes was called Kizar Lane. An early travel writer wrote a warning to visitors to Dublin that if you go down Kizar Lane after it has been raining, it's very slippy and you might slip and fall on your bummy <laughs> so it became known as Kisar Slane <laughs> that's what an early travel writer wrote about our little laneway <laughs> so as we come down now without even realizing it we're coming outside the city walls down to the great cathedral st patrick's this is the cathedral associated with the great writer jonathan swift he had been born in dublin educated at Trinity College and he became Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral in 1713, 300 years ago last year and he was Dean here until his death in 1745. So it was while he was Dean of this great cathedral that he wrote all his great works including of course Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> One of the great traditions here at St. Patrick's that continues to this day started in 1432 and that was the tradition of a choir school. Now he has gained the trust of the king, and the king is marching his men through Gulliver's open legs. Coming up the next one. This, is, this uh, story is very close to the heart of Dubliners. And as we go along, we're actually coming to the beginning of the story where Gulliver was shipwrecked uh, and the Lilliputs all tied him down. But it's just nice, isn't it? And these are modern apartments built by the city council. So these would be what you'd call social housing. Very, very good standard of social housing here in Dublin. And anybody who lives in around this area, that for generations the same families would have lived in the area. True born Dublin. Colbrookdale Foundry in Shropshire. Sir. Phil said want to know why people were standing so close to the footpath. I said, it's because they're idiots. I actually said to a little girl one day, she had her pram stuck out into the traffic. I said, excuse me, Mrs. You'll, your child will get killed. And she proceeded to berate me and say, was I impugning her reputation as a mother? I don't think she realized that the wheels of the pram were right out into the traffic. So I've decided now, leave them to it. Or go now. There's no use trying to teach the young men anything. Now there's our lovely bridge getting lit up for the evening, the Rosy Hackett Bridge. On your left you can see, oh it's only a few people still sitting on it, they're and sitting the there with their umbrellas. It's a gypsy. <coughs> we go up around by Trinity College and around Merrion Square, up around Georgia and Dublin. Dublin was once a very elegant city. All during the 1700s, Oakley's front gate. So if you ever are meeting a friend in Dublin Trinity and they say, we'll see you at front gate, that's what they're talking about, the front gate at Trinity. If him should go for medicals. And here yeah. comes everybody after a day shopping in Grafton Street. Straight ahead of us is Grafton Street, our premier shopping street. And the founder of our national theatre. Irish doors. 
The park on our left hand side nowadays, of course, is open to the public, but it was a private park until 1974. So we have lovely, lovely Georgian houses here. And you look down there ahead of us, you can see all the chimney pots up on top of the buildings. You can see there's no skyscrapers. Tomorrow morning we could come up here on tour up to Spain and discover they were all filmed in Spain. Not in Arizona, not in Texas or anything. It was a real eye-opener. So can't, you, you can't say, but you were warned. And you know the television series, The Tudors, filmed in Dublin filmed in Christchurch Cathedral and other places. We're going to uh, have extended around the city, is likely to knock her down. So we've moved her. Ah, don't worry, Molly's not gone. She's coming up on our left hand side in a much safer position outside St. Andrew's Church, coming up on our left. So you'll see her now just coming into view. There she is, Molly Millow. Molly. That's right, she's, she was a fishmonger and sure it was no wonder, because so was her father and mother before. And they all wheeled their barrows through the streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels and live alive oh. Well, poor old Molly Malone died of a fever. Oh, Have a look at their faces. Look at them. Tell you've got those three pairs chasing you, do you throw away the porridge? Now, the music venue, the old... Okay. By Dublin. It was a good day. This is Harland and Wolf shipyard where Titanic was built by White Star Company. Famous place. And this is a Titanic Museum. That castle was built by Normans from Normandy. The weather is great, but what we can do? Beautiful Irish coast, very green, very green country. Basically, just farms, nothing else. Please, not right there. Focus. Oh. 
So we decided to walk, not to wait for shuttle. It's raining. But it's a real Irish experience. Babe. That's what it's called. Giant causeway. This is the best day of going to Giant Causeway. from color yeah it's quite unusual low tide <laughs> 